Thank you everyone for being here today and welcome to today's webinar, Mentally Stuck and Don't Know How to Advance in Your Career, Career Webinar. This event is brought to you by your Vanderbilt Alumni Association. I'm Mary Pellet, and I work in the alumni office and I'm so glad that you could join us from wherever you are today. Today's webinar will last around 45 minutes and there will be time at the end for questions. If you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box and we will be sure to address them in some way before the end of the session. And I do wanna let you know we are recording today's webinar and it will be on vuconnect.com slash webinars in the coming days. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to Nona King, career strategy coach. She graduated from Vanderbilt University with a degree in music and she also holds an MBA. She is a career coach for professionals looking to jumpstart or pivot in their careers. She specializes in career development, personal branding, and making high impact connections by uncovering untapped potential and providing the connections to help professionals reimagine their careers and possibilities in life. Thank you so much for being with us today, Nona. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I really appreciate this. And thank you so very much for um, calling in and listening into this webinar. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you about how to get mentally unstuck so that you can move forward and you can advance in your career. Now, um, before I get really into this, I always like to know who I'm talking to in the room, so to speak. Um, so um, there is a short poll and I want you to select the statement that best described you. So if you're a student, select one. If you've been working full-time less than three years, the second one. The third one, if you've been working full-time three to seven years, or if you've been full-time eight to 14 years or 15 or more years. Okay, so Mary, I would love for you to tell me the percent. Oh, okay, great. So um, majority of you, about 36% of you have been working full-time between eight and 14 years. Um, and the next is about 27% is between three and seven. And then um, each 18% less than three years and then another 18% um, more than 15 years. So it's a pretty good mix of people. So this is great, I'm so excited. Okay, so I have some rules for you guys relating to this, this webinar. So, and it's very simple. The first is I'm going to ask you questions throughout this presentation. And because really it's about you. And I wanna make sure that you are engaged and you're answering questions using the chat feature. So if I ask a question, please use the chat because that's gonna give me feedback. This is also going to be very important that you are an active listener. I know that we all feel that we are great at multitasking, but all I'm asking you to do is spend like 40 to 45 minutes of your time focused on you, right? And then the last one is what I like to call is keep it real, right? I'm committed to being real about some of the challenges that I faced throughout my career and what I did to change thing or things around. And if you feel the same, feel free to um, add your information to the chat. Okay, now we're gonna start with this interaction. So I have a question for you. Tell me what tools that you've used to get mentally unstuck. I want you to type that in the chat. I'm curious, what tools have you used in the past to get mentally unstuck? What tools have you used to get mentally unstuck? Okay. Somebody said books, journaling. Some people have used a career coach. Working out, that's a good one. Exercising, meditating, taking a long break, to-do list. Love it, love it, love it, you guys. Love it, love it. Podcast, good. Okay, so um, 
What I want to do is share a little bit about me. Thank you, Mary, for giving that um, great overview about me, but I wanna give you a little bit more specifics. So I am the creator of an online career coaching service called Level Up Behind the Scenes. Um, it's a curriculum to help get people from where they are to where that next is for them. I'm also the, I'm the CEO of Career Catalyst Group, and I also have a nonprofit called Career Catalyst Foundation that offers scholarships for young professionals really trying to establish themselves in their, in their career, and they need um, assistance with career coaching as well. And I really help mid and executive level professionals really try to understand how to land the roles of their, their dreams, to um, fast track their pay, and, and, and really advancing their careers. So who am I and why should you listen to me? So I have over 20 years of experience as a global marketing leader working for Fortune 400 companies like L'Oreal or Coca-Cola. And I have this really strong track record of landing roles that I wanted and advancing in my career using some really just winning job search strategies. And I've helped to apply those strategies in helping others. In fact, my clients have increased their average rate of pay by over $40,000. And most of my clients have landed roles that they love in less than 60 days. Um, I've been featured in um, different you know, corporate organizations and educational institutions, just like Vandy. Um, but more importantly, my clients have really excelled in their careers and they've been promoted and they've just landed roles that met their requirements. They've landed in tech and healthcare and private equity and consumer packaged goods, among, um, among, among others. So um, my life wasn't always this rosy, though. Um, this is actually a picture of me when I graduated from Vandy. A long, long, long time ago. <laughs> um, like Mary said, I majored in flute performance and I was a Blair student. And I decided that I wanted to go straight through from undergraduate school to graduate school to pursue a master's in business administration. I successfully earned my MBA in two years. <laughs> and then I found myself without a job. I was interested in either marketing or brand management and I couldn't find a job in either. And looking back on it, it was probably because I did not have that full-time work experience. Um, I did not have a network, so I didn't have anyone who could advocate on my behalf to hiring managers or anybody in the organizations. Um, I did not really know how to, well, I didn't really understand the value that I could bring to the table. And so it was even more difficult for me to communicate that, that value to other people. And my background was so very different coming from a music background. It was so different from a traditional brand manager track. And so I ended up moving back home with my parents after graduate school. And I started my own marketing consulting business because I wanted to gain the skills that these people said that I lacked. And I did this for a couple of years, I enjoyed it. I ended up getting back into the workforce lo or looking into the job search um, part of the work, <laughs> trying to get a job. And, but this time around, I decided that I was going to do the work and make sure that I clearly translated how I could add value to organizations. I ended up getting into my career path of choice but that process took me five years, five years between getting my MBA to landing the role uh, of, my, of my dreams. And so I worked for L'Oreal. And although this has nothing to do with marketing, I just like to tell people my face was featured on a hair color box. Um, I worked for Coca-Cola and I launched new products under the Simply Orange brand, worked for Pactive Corporation. Um, they make hefty um, products and I managed uh, the hefty trash bag business. And I was able to travel to Hong Kong and work on a TV commercial, producing a TV commercial with Jackie Chan, which was awesome. 
And then I also work for Himalaya Herbal Healthcare, and they make herbal supplements and personal care products. Now, it took me a long time to establish my career in marketing, but I loved it. Love it. But my passion has always been around managing and developing and, and growing people. And this was my team that I worked with at Himalaya. And, you know, I successfully, you know, moved up the corporate ladder and to senior level executive roles, but, you know, something was missing. I didn't really know what it was at the time. Fast forward to May of 2020, when the light shined bright on the social and the racial injustices and the racial inequities that were being discussed in the media and it was being discussed among my colleagues, it like forced me to think about my life and my career journey as a black woman, right? And so the first thing that I did, I invested time in myself, right? And I did this by reflecting on my past accomplishments, and I started taking inventory of, of my strengths and, and my passions. And I redis rediscovered parts of my identity that I had, I had, I felt like I almost lost, right? And at that moment, at that point, that's when I realized that although I like marketing, I was climbing the wrong ladder of success because I had this strong passion for developing professionals on a full-time basis. And, you know, going from being a marketing leader to career coaching full-time, there were some skill gaps, right? So I invested in trainings and workshops and, you know, hired coaches and I did some pro bono work to put, you know, put my skills into practice, right? And so now I'm just happy to say that my career is now aligned with my purpose because I'm helping people to rediscover their strengths and their passions and helping them to expand their um, ability to network and gain personal advocates and really not just land roles, but land roles that meet their requirements, meet their passions and meet their goals. Now, I know many of you have probably listened in on these um, webinars, these Vandy career um, van uh, webinars, and you probably have talked to you know, a career coach before, but for those who don't really know what a career coach does, I just thought I'd add a slide just to give you a little bit more uh, context. So I do believe that all of you, all of you all are listening, you have excellence within you, right? All we need to do is rediscover what that value is and help you identify and package your skills in such a way that we can communicate those transferable skills to your target areas of interest, right? And then um, help you to prepare for opportunities and you know, create a, a roadmap. Once you identify where you wanna go, creating that roadmap and then keeping you accountable so that when there are obstacles, we can help you know, just remove those challenges out of your way so that you can continue to move forward. Now, the specific process that I use is a three-pronged approach. It's career planning, which includes really thoughtful reflection of your strengths and your values and identifying companies and opportunities that really meet your requirements. Personal, um, the personal branding is translating your transferable skills and the value to your audience, right? And that can come in the form of updated resume or optimizing your LinkedIn profile or creating a brand pitch or how you show up when you're negotiating a salary, right? And then high impact connections, that's building relationships at its core. You know, we call it networking but building relationships and preparing you for interviews and improving and, and building your confidence throughout the process. Now, I do have a few delivery options. There's one-on-one -on -one career coaching. Um, this is great for people who may want a more tailored approach because not everybody has to go through, through the entire process. And then I also have an online career coaching service um, which uses Everything that I teach in my one-on-ones, I've applied it and put it in an online course at a fraction of the cost, as well as group coaching. So let's get into this. So 
Um, today's agenda, I'm going to cover some very interesting statistics around um, the, what I'm calling the dream career gap that's happening in America. And then we're going to go right into six strategies to get you mentally unstuck using the level up behind the scenes curriculum. And then I'm going to encourage you to just keep learning. I'm going to um, give you more information about an upcoming masterclass um, that you can participate in and then ways to stay connected with me. Okay. All righty. Okay. So I mentioned to you earlier that I worked at Coca-Cola and at the time it was the best company to work for if you worked in consumer packaged goods because it's, it's one of the most largest, well-respected consumer packaged goods companies in the world. It still is. And so when my husband and I decided to move to Houston from Chicago, it was because he had this amazing career opportunity. And, um, but, but, but I, on the other hand, was having trouble landing a role that I wanted because at the time I felt like there were no other opportunities. If you want to be in marketing, you want to be in consumer packaged goods and you're in Houston, you, the, the, the pickings were, were slim is what I thought. So when I finally got the offer to work for Coca-Cola um, at their Minute Maid division, I was super excited, right? But believe it or not, this was the first time that I experienced sexism in my professional career, okay? Now I'm gonna share a specific story and I'm sharing this with you because I wanna give you context of my experience, what was going on at the time and give you an example, a real live example of physically staying at a company when mentally I knew it was time to go. Okay, so I had just come back from maternity leave after having my first child. My first day back, my manager at the time said, you know what, being a mother is one of the most important things in the world. But I racked up thousands of airline miles and I'm not doing this again. I did this last year, I'm not gonna do this again. So you might consider moving from your current brand manager role to an innovation marketing role because I need the person in this role to travel. And you know, innovation doesn't require a lot of travel. Now, any of you who might be mothers um, and remember the first time you had to go back to work, what you were thinking in your mind, right? Talk about imposter syndrome. <laughs> I mean, I question whether I could be a mother and work at the same time. I literally was questioning that. I, I remember that dis dis distinctly. My manager also, that same week, I found out that he posted my current role on a job board while I was still in the role. Now, this was obviously discriminatory and I should have went to HR and I did not. Um, but I stayed in the position. And despite his efforts to break me down, I continued to climb the corporate ladder at Coca-Cola. When I finally left after seven and a half years working at Coca-Cola, I realized at that point that I was fulfilled and happy only about a year and a half of that seven and a half years. This is what I was telling myself. Well, Coca-Cola is the best consumer packaged goods company to work for if you live in Houston. I mean, Coca-Cola has, you know, good benefits. I can work remotely two days a week. And that was unheard of. This was way, way pre-pandemic, right? You know what? I'm going to get promoted once someone in the department leaves. I won't be able to replace my income if I leave. You know, I do like the people that I work with. If I move on to somewhere else, I don't, I don't want to have to start at the bottom again. Right? 
the deal is when you stay and when I stayed at my company longer than I should have, it led to me extending my growth timelines, my timeline to be able to grow, right? I missed other opportunities. My career really did stagnate the long, longer that I stayed there because I knew it wasn't a good situation for me. And with the career being at a, you know, kind of at a standstill, my salary stagnated as well. And my work and home life was imbalanced and I, you know, imposter syndrome was seeping in and I ultimately got burned out. So I wanted to share a couple of stats that I really thought was kind of interesting. Um, this is from Money Penny. It says only 7% of American workers say that they are in their dream career. That means that 93% of Americans are not working in their dream career, right? Now, there's about 20% of American workers that say that they're unhappy in their current role. And another 27% of people say that they're neither unhappy or happy, which means that they're willing to move on if they have the opportunity. So that means like almost half, 46% of people are lukewarm or not happy in their current role. So I'm curious, what things have you told yourself on why you haven't moved forward in any past roles or even in your current role? What things have you told yourself on why you haven't moved forward? Please type that in the chat. Because remember, I can see the chat. I wanna, I wanna hear from you guys. There's a reason why you guys are, are listening in. You wanna get mentally unstuck. What are you saying to yourself on why you haven't moved forward? I know there's someone because of the benefits. The job search is difficult. Everything that I've already noted, thank you for being so honest and transparent. I really appreciate that because we feel that there's already stability in the current role. Absolutely, absolutely. I love it. Okay, so. Another reason dream careers haven't been achieved yet is because we're too comfortable or we don't have the confidence that we need. About 20% of Americans say that they're too comfortable with their current situation and that's, that's what's stopping them from making a switch to their dream career. And another 20% say that they don't feel like they can pursue their, their dream career because they don't feel like they have the right experience. So my goal with this webinar is to teach you some strategies to get you mentally unstuck so that you can move forward and you can advance in your career because I believe you can. So the six strategies include clarifying why you are stuck, looking inward, exploring your options, reconnecting to your why, letting go of negative thinking and dreaming big, and taking responsibility in action. Let's look at the first one. Clarify why you are stuck. You know, it's hard to move forward until you fully understand why you are stuck. You have to be specific and you have to identify what's really going on here, right? So here's some, here's some ideas on what you can do. So what I say is name it and be specific. So for example, there's a big difference in saying, I feel stuck at my job versus I feel stuck at my job because I don't feel like I have the right skills to get promoted. Once you name it, then you can be a little bit more specific as to what you need to do to change things around. Seek to un uncover the underlying issues that are getting in the way and stopping you from progressing. Now you can do this by journaling or like I think I read somebody's journals, which is good, or just simply taking the time to ask yourself why you're in this situation and what is contributing to this. So I had a client who worked for the same company for 25 years after college, right? And she found felt like she, her, her career had stagnated. She didn't feel like she was growing in her career. And after journaling, she realized that the parts of her job that she enjoyed had nothing to do 
with what she was getting paid for. <laughs> she only enjoyed her ability to volunteer in the community. Now, she received accolades from her manager and her manager's manager, but it was not valued enough for any promotion opportunities at that particular company. So at that point, she decided to start exploring opportunities that really aligned with her passions and her experience. And she ended up landing a role um, that met her requirements. And she was able to earn and receive a 25% base pay increase, okay? The other thing you can do is once you name it, you're more likely to be able to go deeper as to what skills you think that you're missing and how to close that gap through training or stretch assignments or going back to school, right? So once you name it, then maybe the solution will present itself so you can really move forward. The second strategy is to look inward. So you have to remind yourself about your value and what you bring to the table. I find that many of the people that I end up working with are the ones who have started to question their abilities and their value because they feel like they have, they're like beat down because they've had so many professional losses in their career whether they didn't get promoted or they keep getting passed over for opportunities or they're underpaid or under, underemployed or they're just not clear on what their next step is in their career, right? Or they don't know what they want to do. So as a first exercise, I really challenge my clients to start listing their strengths and their accomplishments and their likes and their dislikes and their passions and their goals. Because to be honest with you, Many of us don't take the opportunity to do a full self-assessment. Instead, we, what we do is we focus our attention every year on a performance review plan that our companies have you know, identified. You know, how have you met the goals required by the company, right? And often our jobs have us doing numerous tasks some of these tasks we're really good at, some of them we want to improve on, and others, we just don't like doing them at all. But I, I think as a great first step, we should focus on assessing our strengths and our accomplishments and what we bring to the table, irregardless of what's going on with the company, because it helps to rebuild our self-confidence, right? And it gives us the opportunity to objectively assess what we want next in our personal and professional life. Does that make sense? I hope, it, I hope it's making sense. Okay, the third strategy is to explore your options. So even when it seems like we are completely stuck, know that you always have options. You always have options. Very often we shut down options before the idea has even fully been formulated, right? So if you sit down and brainstorm as many ideas as you can, even the ones that seem far-fetched and ridiculous, what you need to do is continue to brainstorm more ideas. So even when you think that you've thought of all of them, push yourself to identify at least two more, right? Brainstorm as many options as possible. And so when you look at your list, you, you might see some options that aren't possible and some might not be perfect and, you know, but I promise you, some of those potential options are going to be helpful because you won't feel as mentally trapped. You might see an option that, that make, might make sense for you. So I, I'm actually working with a client right now who's a fitness professional. And she's looking to make a change because she's not growing in her career and she doesn't feel valued. And so we're, we've been you know, making an exhaustive list of some of her options. This is one of, one of the um, strategies that we're using with her. And we're just kind of writing down some of her options before she jumps ship. Let's, let's think of some of the options that you could do. You could either like share your concerns with your manager or you can start your own coaching business, 
or maybe you can look for other gyms or like switch to another company doing the same thing that you are doing because you enjoy what you're doing. Um, or maybe you can identify aspects of your role that you really, really enjoy and then explore some job descriptions that utilize that skill, right? Or you can network with people outside of your industry to see, you know, maybe understand what their, their career path has been, what skills that, you know, the requirements that are, you know, required in their roles to, you know, give you an idea. She can go back to school. She can identify a gap or a need that she's identified in her current organization and maybe provide a recommendation on a new role or a new opportunity that can be, you know, fill a gap. And this could help in a couple of ways. One, you know, it can help the organization, but it also can help her professionally grow, possibly. So just start exploring, writing down and brainstorming those ideas. The fourth strategy, reconnect to your why. Feeling stuck is often because you've lost sight of the bigger picture and what's really important to you. Let me give you some thoughts on this. So reminding yourself about why you accepted this role in the first place or why you accepted to be in this work at this particular company or why you decided to enter in this particular industry at the, at, in this first place. Um, like why, why? There's a reason why you are in this current situation that you're in. And then maybe reflecting on what did you expect to learn by being in this role or being at this company? What were you expecting to learn? And then assessing whether you're meeting those goals. That's a great first step to taking a step back and reconnecting to your why. Hmm. Listing what you enjoy doing in your current work can remind you of what brings you joy in your career. Maybe you love the mission that the company is working towards, or you love how your efforts are helping to advance the mission of the organization. When I worked at Himalaya Herbal Healthcare, it wasn't necessarily the fact that I was leading a marketing organization that brought me joy. What brought me joy was my team. I loved advocating for them and on their behalf. And I loved encouraging them to grow. Like that's the reason why I got up. I mean, there was a, there was a point when my husband and I were going to move from Houston and I was gonna figure out a way to stay at Himalaya because of my team. That's the reason why I was staying at Himalaya, right? Another exercise to rediscovering your why is to list your personal and professional values that are important to you. Now, some of you, um, it's easy for you to you know, say what your values are and others, it may take you a little while. And I have a, a, a short exercise to help you get your juices flowing to think about what your values are um, and how to uncover your values. So think of the most meaningful moments in your life. Moments where you felt peace, happiness, and fulfillment, right? So some of the questions you can ask yourself, like what made them meaningful to you? Who were you with? What were you doing? Moments that brought me peace include um, marrying my best friend at our wedding. Um, the birth of our kids. Um, another meaningful moment is when people that I work with figure out what their value is again and their confidence shoot up. That's meaningful to me. And so those values that are associated with that is family and personal growth. That's important to me. 
Um, on the flip side, you can, just like the exercise above, you can um, imagine the opposite. So think of moments when you felt the least satisfied, right? Um, what were some of your worst life experiences? What were they unfilling to you? Why were they unfilling to you? And how were other people behaving towards you? Now, I know we don't like to think about what dissatisfies us, but we can turn that around to, to explain why this is such an uncomfortable situation for us, that it's going against our values, right? So you've already heard my story of something that made me very dissatisfied, right? I felt betrayed and I felt disrespected. And that's why loyalty and trust and respect for others are important values for me. So as you list your meaningful moments or your least satisfied moments, you should start seeing a theme emerge, right? Because this is gonna point you to some of your core values. So, okay, we're gonna use the chat feature again. So what are some of your values that have guided you through your life? I want you to type that in your chat. What are some of the important values that you have? Um, and there's a reason why I'm asking you guys this question. What are some of your values that guide, have guided you through your life? Integrity, mm -hmm. health, What are some of your values that guide you throughout your life? Creativity, I love it. Perseverance, I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so the reason why I asked you guys this question, there's a reason for it. Um, so um, we've talked about your values and I want you to think about your current role and try to think about the things that you enjoy about your current role. Think about some things that you enjoy about your current role, just the things that you like. You don't have to put that in the chat. So the reason why I'm asking what, you're, what you like to do and what your values are, the intersection between your likes and your core values are your non-negotiables. That means that these are the key benefits that must come with any role that you're in or the company that you work for in order for you to be truly happy and truly successful. You, you, you got, it, got to, it has to work together. Those are your non-negotiables, right? So you can use this list to help narrow down your job search when you're looking for new opportunities or it actually remind you about the reasons and your passions and, and, and the values that drove you to where you are today, okay? Okay, so um, sometimes people need assistance on, you know, helping to uncover their strengths and uncovering their values and figuring out how to translate their skills to, to, the, to the next. I'm actually going to offer you guys, um, the, the Vandy alums and the family and the people who are listening, and even with the recording, the people that um, get to listen later, I'm offering you a free 20 minute career direction consultation. And in this consultation, I'm going to help um, or give a quick assessment of what you're doing currently in terms of if you're looking for a job or if you want trying to get promoting your current you know, role or your current company, um, try to help assess what's going on and provide some clarity on some options on what you might wanna do next. And what I have here, you can either enter the URL that I have on the left, or you can actually scan it using your phone with this QR code to schedule time with me on my calendar. It's a live calendar, okay? Okay, so let's continue. So the fifth strategy is to let go of negative thinking and dream, right? So when there was a point, there were a couple of times when I felt like I was stuck in my career. And, and um, one time I, I left, I actually worked with a life coach and to help me figure out what I wanted to do next in my career, right? And the process really helped me to rediscover my passions and helped me clearly define my goals. And my goals at the time was I wanted to lead a market, marketing organization and I wanted to manage professionals and I wanted to stay in Houston, right? Within two months, I found a role in a company 
that align with my passions and my skill set and my professional goals. And I was able to reach those goals partly because I identified and wrote down the vision that I have for my career. So if you don't have a vision of where you want to go, how are you going to figure out if you're going to get there, right? You need to have that vision and you have to turn off any negative thinking as much as possible. So how do we do this? So when you let go of negative thinking, you, you define what you want in the future. You start dreaming. Remember when you were a kid, you probably had all these dreams of what you can do. What we have to do is get back there. We have to remember and, 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 and don't put the, you know, the, I won't say the shackles of um, responsibility and what you're supposed to do as an ex age person or whatever. Dream. Think about what you want to do. Remember that with a career vision, anything is possible to accomplish. So you have to find a way to just turn off that negative thinking. And don't assume that the future is limited to what is happening today. Okay, so a couple of questions that you might want to ask yourself. So what skills or experience do you want to gain in the next 12 to 18 months? You have the, you, you have a, you have a thought. Put it down on paper. You know, what are some of the skills and experience that you want to gain? What would you want to do for work if you had relatively unlimited cash reserves? This is going to help you dream as to what you want to do. Okay. The sixth strategy is to take responsibility and take action. So when we are feeling stuck, it is easy for, for ourselves to feel like we're the victim of a situation and to feel like the world is stopping us from moving forward. But the reality is that it is so important to be the, become the hero of our own stories. And we need to take control and move ourselves forward, right? And how do we do this? So the first thing is to act. Getting into action is critical to getting unstuck. What do they say? There's no substitute for momentum because action enables further action, requires even more action, right? Whereas inactivity creates self-doubt, confusion, and, and inertia, right? Just stand still. So just don't talk about what you're going to do. Do it and put it into action. Um, when you think about your first step or your next step, why don't you just keep it small and achievable, right? To get the momentum going. So let's say that you know that you're not happy in your current role and you know you want to make a change. Why don't you commit to writing five of your strengths and skills on a sheet of paper every day or commit to writing um, a, an accomplishment that you're proud of? Write that down once a day for the next 10 days, right? Once you start achieving these bite-sized goals, you'll be able to have this information that you can use when you're updating your LinkedIn profile or updating your resume or preparing for interviews, right? And then taking responsibility and control can even mean asking for help. So you don't have to find the solution on your own, right? You can reach out to your manager, you know, as a first person that might not be aware that you're unhappy or that there's something that's not right, right? They should be your go-to go person to help find solutions. And if your manager is one of the issues, you maybe you can talk to like a mentor or a sponsor that you um, value their insights because they can give you some valuable advice as well. And if you want an unbiased view to help you develop a plan and keep you accountable, you can reach out to a career coach. Now, I always like to end my, my discussions with a quote just to give you something to think about and hopefully resonates with you. And this quote is by Lee Rose and Kathleen McGee Anderson. And it says, there is pain in staying the same and there is pain in changing. Pick the one that moves you forward, okay? So, um, I said before that there's an upcoming masterclass and I want you to keep learning. I want to help keep you, keep the momentum going uh, and, and move forward, help you to rediscover your excellence by uncovering some aspects of yourself that you might've forgotten about. Um, there's a way to um, help you decode a job description so you know exactly what hiring managers are looking for. 
and um, give you, I'm going to also give you a framework to help you um, improve your professional online presence and hopefully improve your confidence and squash any negative thoughts you might have. This upcoming masterclass is this Monday, um, December 12th at 12 noon. All you have to do is email me at um, Nona at careercatalystgroup.com. And just let me know that you would like to participate in this upcoming masterclass. And I will send you the link to the um, Zoom information. So a reminder, we have this free 20 minute career direction consultation, and then we have this masterclass. And now I'm ready for questions. Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nona. And so if y'all have questions right now, feel free to submit them in the chat um, box. So we had one come through just now. Um, John asks, what is your opinion of the 360 degree review? Mm, very good question. So I actually like the 360 um, degree reviews, um, the opportunity to speak to or get a, a, an evaluation from not only your manager, but the people that you work with, people that might be your direct reports. I'm a huge advocate of that um, because through that lens, 360 lens, it may give you a, a very good view of your strengths, your opportunities, right, for growth. Because what we want to do is continue to grow. So I'm a huge advocate. And in case no one, or in case someone doesn't know what the 360 review is. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. So basically you get a chance to your manager, at least from my, my um, experience, your manager allows um, people who are um, your, maybe your direct reports or your peers or someone that you've worked with in a cross-functional team environment to evaluate you on certain uh, objectives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> so if someone was looking to pivot from a position in like a research field and they wanted to move into an industry or like a corporate role, what, what should they do? Good question. Okay. So um, first I would, before looking for opportunities outside of yourself, I am a huge advocate of assessing your strengths. What are your skills? What have you accomplished? What do you do well? What are your passions? Like that's so important first, because you have gained skills in the research area that are probably valuable when you decide to, to, to move forward and, and try to pivot. Um, the next thing is to identify um, your target roles of interest. What are you interested in doing in corporate or industry? What is that um, specific thing? Look for um, job descriptions because the job descriptions tell you exactly the pain points the hiring manager is looking to solve, right? That is what they're looking to solve. And so they're going to be very clear on the skills that they're looking for. So because you've already gone through this process of understanding what your skills are and your, your, your story about your accomplishments, this should be very easy for you to identify um, the, whether you have those specific skills. And if you notice that you have any skill gaps where there's some skills that they're asking for that you don't have, either you have to go back to school or get a certification or something like that, or get some type of training, um, you find a way to fill those fill those gaps. Now, I will say this. Just because a job description tells you everything that they're looking for in their ideal candidate, you don't necessarily have to check off all of the boxes to apply. Now, if you're trying to be a doctor and you don't have the technical expertise, then you wouldn't move forward. But you don't necessarily have to check off all the boxes, but you know, the majority of of the skills that they're looking for and the technical skills. If you don't have that, you need to fill that gap. Now, this last piece is so critical. Informational interviewing is so important because 
Um, the informational interviewing is when you get a chance to talk to somebody and learn more about their career journey, their career path, what they like about the role. It's just trying to get more insider information about the role or maybe even the company. And so the reason why I'm a huge advocate of that is because you might be able to talk to people in the industry to under, better understand what skills are look, what they're looking for in general or um, more information about you know, suggestions on what you could possibly do and resources to, to, that, that can, might be able to help you. And also informational interviews give you visibility to the hidden job market. How many of you have, like at your companies, when there's a new opportunity or a role about to open, there's a lot of HR people saying, do you know of anybody, right? That, so, because they say that, um, I know there's a lot of numbers out there, but the one that I've seen that seems reputable is there's the jobs that you find online or in job boards, that represents about 60% of the opportunities. So that means about 40% are not visible. They're in the hidden job market that you are not even tapping into. So I'm a huge advocate of that. And um, it's just so important to be able to translate your current skills because you have enough skills, I believe, to translate that to the requirements of the job. Thank you for all of that great information and so applicable to so many different areas. Um, what is the best way to level up your education and ultimately your career? Certifications, master's degree? So the short answer is it depends. It depends on your target role of interest. The, like I said before, the job descriptions tell you exactly what the hiring manager is looking for and what the requirements are. So if you see like 10 job descriptions of area of interest, similar interest, and they're all saying they're looking for a master's degree, then that's telling you that they, you, need, you should have a master's degree. If you're seeing most of them that don't even have the education, then you don't necessarily need that. And that's why, again, I think it's important to really understand, get inside information from a company perspective, industry perspective, the, um, what really is important from, from the people that are already in the company through informational interviewing. Thanks. So Ryan asks here, what are your recommendations on how to level up in your career when you're unable to relocate and the local market is uninspiring? Mm. So this is, who did you say it was? This is Ryan. This is a very mm -hmm. good question, Ryan. So um, I would love to talk to you offline to get the specifics because I want to understand exactly what you're actually interested in. And I'm I know I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but you might not feel like there's opportunities in your local market. I don't know how, what the market is, but, but I believe that there's probably some people that you can talk to. Um, you also might be able to find opportunities via remote. I don't know what type of work that you do, but the world is a lot, larger after the pandemic because a lot of companies are still offering remote opportunities. So um, I, again, I will focus on what do you do well? What do you want to do next? And when you say the local mar is, market is uninspiring, I wanna know what that means to you. I hope that you reach out to me, Ryan. I wanna talk to you more. <laughs> Yes, that uninspiring phrase really gets my mind wondering uh -huh. what it means. So I want to know. I want to know too. I want to know more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> keep me posted. Okay. You find something, Ryan. Um, <laughs> and then if anyone else has questions, we have a few more minutes and we had a few sent in before. So I'm going to keep going along with those, but would love to answer questions live here. So, um, how do you know or sense when it's time to make that career shift? And you talked about some stagnation. So how do you know when, when it's time to move on? Yeah, so it's a good, very, very good question. Mine is very simple. There's four questions that I ask myself. 
when I'm evaluating a new opportunity or trying to assess whether I want to stay where I am. Um, I ask, am I advancing in my career? Am I learning something new? Am I advancing in pay? Am I having fun? If I cannot say yes to at least three out of the four questions, that opportunity is not right for me or the new opportunity is not right for me or my you know, exist, <laughs> existing opportunity that maybe might need to be a change. So let me give you an example. Uh, and this was, this is actually, this was reality. So um, another aspect of my exploration um, before I decided to do career coaching, um, I was advancing in pay. The money was no problem, but I wasn't growing. I wasn't learning anything new. And it was getting to a point where I was not having fun anymore. Pay is only going to get you so far. If you're not happy, you're not growing. You know, like you're not having any fun. Like it's only gonna get you so far. It might be good for the first month or two, but then what else is next? So, yeah. I love those four very specific, simple questions. Yep. And you've shared so many lessons you've learned so far and really appreciate these personal experiences. But what are your biggest lessons that you've learned so far that you yeah. haven't yet shared with us? Mm. I think I kind of alluded to this, but I'm going to be a little bit more specific. The biggest lesson that I've learned is um, the importance and value of relationship building. The people who have um, gotten promoted, advanced in their career, made more money, are usually the ones who make their value known to key influencers within the organization. And I didn't really understand that when I was growing in my career. I, I felt like networking was like just kissing somebody's butt and I wasn't gonna do it and I, so I didn't. But to, the reality is that I probably, um, in, it probably impacted my, my growth opportunities. But when I made an intentional effort to start building relationships and getting to know people and help figuring out how I can help other people. That's when my career really did soar because um, I, I started getting people advocating on my behalf when I wasn't in the room and, and, and I was doing the same. So I think the biggest lesson, I know that we feel comfortable talking to people that we, that may look like us or have same, similar experiences as, a, as us. But I think if we, try to get to know more people and try to find commonalities that we have with people, then our relationships and our life is going to just be even more enriched. That's the biggest lesson. Beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Nona, for thank being you. here today. And I'm gonna drop a um, survey in the chat box and I'd love, for everyone to fill it out so we can let Nona know how wonderful she was. And if there is anything that we could do differently next time to make your experience as alumni coming to these webinars even better, we'd love to hear that as well. And all this recording and all of our career resources are available on vuconnect.com. Nona, thank, thank you, you again for being thank here. Thank you for the opportunity. It was fun. Thank you. Bye, everyone.